Welcome back to Titan Machine Tool. This is kind of a part two of the other last video I did where I was making the fixture to load these parts on, the faceplate fixture. But anyways, here we are, machining the parts now. I got them set up. You, you can see how whacked out that front face is right there. I cut a whole bunch on one end and then when you get to the middle, okay, it still hasn't even cut yet. So anyways, that's what we got going on here. We got multiple facing passes going on right here. Whoa! Incoming! I think I got my safety glasses on. So it's an interrupted cut because you can hear the counter bars for the uh, bolts that have got it mounted to the faceplate there. And then we got the oil groove, or what's left to the oil groove right there. You can see them with all the nasty gouges in the face of the part. But we're facing it all away. We're gonna face it all away and then regroove. Put those oil grooves back in. We, al we also gotta turn the OD a little bit because there was this unbelievably huge smashing. I don't know, it was all, it was all pushed out. The whole edge was uh, crowned out. Looks like somebody beat it with a three pound hammer. I better back up, I'm eating these chips. Anyways, I'll show you the tools I got. This is tool one. It's gonna rough face a bunch of material off. It's gonna turn um, that nasty, nasty edge off the uh, OD of the part. And it's just gonna put a little chamfer on it. And then we're gonna go over to tool two over here. It's just a boring bar. I'm actually gonna face that part at Z zero with this thing because it's making a nicer finish. And I also have to go in and just kind of like sweep the ball lightly too to make sure the concentricity is there. So that's what I'll do with that. It'll face and bore. And then we got the trepanning tool over here. We're gonna put those grooves into the face of that part after it's all cleaned up. And that's a uh, Kaiser thin bit right there. What do we got? What are we using? Kaiser thin bit. That's, that's the grooving tool, the holder right there. And we got a we got the little thin bit insert in there. All right, but I, I did all three of them, that's the last one. So that's what they look like after we fix them up, resurface, regroove, and then uh, I just, that inside radius, I just give it the buff and puff with some emery. Chair for the outside, cut the nasty off, the big nasty flange that's pounded over the edge, we cut that off. So that's, that's a repaired one right there. Back to the machine. So I've taken about 50,000 off the face of that part. I'm not completely removing those oil grooves, but I'm taking so much of them away that there's just a witness mark to where they're at. I got a drawing for this piece right here. I programmed to recut those tray pan grooves at the numbers on the print and they line up nicely with the witness marks of the remainder of what's left to the original oil grooves. And these rings are like 12 and a half inches in diameter. The inside, the inside bore is like seven and a half inches. And then it's got this mongrel radius on the inside there just to blend. And I can show you on the other one. They weren't done in the lathe. They were done in the milling machine. As you can see the tool marks. Let's come over here and see if we can notice them. Uh, you might not be able to see it now because I gave this thing the buff and puff big time. Yeah, I'll show you that other one before we do it. Before I give it the buff and puff here. But you'll be able to see it was done with a radius cutter in the milling machine. You can see the, the tool marks that they're definitely not done in the lathe. So I don't know what that radius is there and I'm not gonna mess around trying to find each one and, and then do the math for each one and just trace it. Buff and puff.
So we got one more pass here. And it removes, facing off 50,000s, removes a lot of that nasty. This one was so nasty, I actually had to cut some of that nasty flange off the OD before I even started. It was, it was really bad. Really bad. And then this thing's got, we got the oil feed holes right there. I had to redrill those things too, but they were so clogged up, they were constipated like you wouldn't believe. They needed some Metamucil big time. So I just redrilled those things out. They're just one eighth. I just pistol drilled them. You can see all the crap come out when I drilled into it. And then same with this one. I just pistol drilled that one, cleaned them up. I did that before, before I recut the tray pan grooves. This one, I did the holes on the face, but the holes on the OD, that crowned edge was so nasty. I couldn't even get the drill in the hole. So I'm gonna have to take be a little cautious pistol drill in those once I get that nasty edge off though it'll clean up a little bit so that's what it's doing now cutting all that nasty the thing looked like like I said it looked like somebody beat the snot out of it with a three pound hammer so we're just cutting that to clean up right there we go right to the face plate on the face plate I put a a relief on the faceplate so that I could turn off of the part. So now it's gonna rough that little chamfer in the front. Oh, no, one more pass. Yeah, it's actually finished at 12.490, so I could clean something up. They probably were like 12 and a half inches originally. And then they, and then when they pounded them out, they went out to like 12.600. So I cut all that crap off before I started. All right, so that guy's done. Change tools. Put the boring bar on there. Boring bar takes two facing passes. I have it programmed to, to put a quarter inch radius on when it gets to uh, its, its finished X coordinate. But because that radius that's existing on it right now was done on the milling machine with the corner rounding tool, they're all a little different. So sometimes they cut, sometimes they don't. Yeah, see right there should have it would put a little quarter inch radius before it goes into the the bore just to kind of click the edge a little bit right there but sometimes they cut sometimes they don't so that essentially re recuts that path again just to try to make a really nice smooth surface it takes another thousand off
like switch tools. So that's 30 thousandths wide. We're gonna make a 60 thousandths wide oil groove. It goes in, plunges 46 thousandths deep. I'd go a little deeper, but that's all, that's all you can get with this tool right here. I'm using the tool I got, and you can't cut more than 46 thousandths deep with this thing. So 46 thousandths deep comes out, moves to the right, 10 thousandths, plunges in, comes out, moves to the left, 10 thousandths, plunges in, and then does the same thing, taking another five off each side just to make nice clean edges. Then it moves out and does the same thing for the second diameter. All right, so that's it. I'll go over and countersink these holes afterwards. I'll go over the milling machine afterwards, I'll countersink these, clean up all those holes right there. But it's, it's a substantial improvement to what, what it was. I'll go back and deburr these things. Sometimes, sometimes I'll rerun the trepanning tool just to clean it up. Yeah, that's about it right there. That's what we got. So it's a substantial improvement. That should work. That's what we got going on there. So now I'll have to go back and clean these oil holes, these oil feed holes. Where are they? Yeah, I mean, look at the OD of this thing. What the hell? I mean, like, wh what would cause somebody to beat the living hell out of this thing in that nature? So, like I said, we got oil feed holes here. Let's see where are they on the front on the periphery here all right so now that we can see it here it's gonna be right here I and mean, look at that thing things a mess so i tried the pistol drill it it's not gonna go 125 i have to be real careful with it 125 wouldn't go all the others i could just clean them up go in clean the crap out of them remelt the constipation and, and they were good but these are these are a mess you have to be a little i mean look at that thing what the hell did somebody do to cause that Anyways, that's what we do. We try to fix this stuff, right? So I'll clean that out afterwards and that'll be good. So there we go. Oh yeah, and then I'll give you the buffing puff on this thing. But if you get down here and look real good, I'll show you, like I said, if you look real good, I don't know if you'll be able to see it with the, uh, the camera or not. But if you look at that radius real good, it's probably not showing up in the camera. You can see the, yeah, look at the smash marks on this thing, incredible. But you can, I don't know, the light's not hitting it right. But take my word for it. If you look at it, you can see it was done with a radius cutter. It's, it's not turned in the lane, so. Anyways, that's that. Turning up them big bronze thrust disc plates, whatever the hell they are. That's it, that's what we had going on here today at Titan Machine Tool. So, appreciate your viewership. Thank you for watching. Signing off, over and out.